Can we try, can we try together, the Lord our rock in him we hide, him three two. It's your turn to sing, shall we sing together? Shout. 
In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We shall remain standing as we make use of hymn 132, uh, Near the Cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. No. 
Amen. Time for children's story. children. Good morning, children. Ah, you guys are not even happy. You guys are not even happy at all. Nyasha. Um, garden of love. Garden of love. <clears throat> okay. One must water, one must weed, one must sow the precious seed. Will all work in unity to tend the garden of love. One must water, one must weed, one must sow the precious seed. Will all work in unity to tend the garden of love. Okay, today we are going to, to talk about. Um, a rose, a rose. Okay, <clears throat> okay. So we'll be dwelling much on the gardener. The gardener is the one who take care of the rose, right? Anyone who knows the rose, the rose. <coughs> sure. Okay. Roses. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, I know you know roses. So there are roses, right? Uh, roses are part of um, other uh, ornamental flowers. Roses. So um, with roses, um, the process is too tough for them for them to to see the roses being exported, be to UK, being to England, be to to they start in a garden. 
the gardener has to do his work. He has to take the soils to the same soil sampling. He has to sample the soils and so that he can know if the pH is okay, so that he can, <clears throat> they are suitable for, 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 the what? for the roses. Then he had to water the garden again. He had to water the garden. After he watered the garden, he had to put the seedlings, the cutlings for the roses. So this guy is the gardener. What he has to do? He had to be so diligent. He don't just, just have to, to, to touch these roses and these cutlings in a way that is harshly. And he had to take them nicely and put them in their, in the, in their trays and water and put manure and all, do, do all sorts of fatigation and stuff and stuff and stuff for them to be what? Hello? Yes. So um, for us to have that okay, it will be a, a process that is not even, uh, it will be a, a thorough process that a gardener had to, uh, to take for, for us to have nice roses. So mind you, a one rose ranges from 60 centimeters to 70 centimeters, cost 95 cents a stem. A roses. That's the current my that, that the current price for a roses at the market. So these roses they are costly and they must be tendered what uh, in a good way. So you guys, you are just but roses. You are just but roses, and the gardeners are your parents and your guidance. These guys they need to have much time with you, talk with you. So when these guys they have to talk to you, with you, you just need to be due diligent. But what they will be doing, they will be just telling you stories, Bible stories. These these are all the processes that, that you guys take through. So you, for you to be a good and a proper rose in the hand of a queen, you must go through a process whereby you will be, you'll be pruned, and pruning is not a, a good process. You'll be pruned, and you'll be plucked out some other um, funny stuff within you so that you might be good what? Good roses. So to the, to the guidance, I had this quotation with, um, with you to the guidance. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> Fashion character by little attentions, often repeated. In the training of your children, study the lesson that God has given in nature. If you train a pink or rose or a lily, how would you do it? Ask the gardener what the process he makes each and every branch and leaf to flourish so beautifully and develop in a symmetry and loveliness. He will tell you that it was by no road touch. No violent effort, for this would only break the delicate stems. Ancho, yes. So um, this is our lesson. Then, um, if you go on 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 Proverbs chapter, um, Proverbs chapter, um, the proverb, um, Proverbs chapter, um, the one that says, "Train up a child in the way that should grow." That Proverbs chapter what? Yes, that one, that one, that one, yes. <laughs> so, that's the process for you gardeners. Because this lesson is actually directed to you gardeners as the parents and guidance for these little children. You must train the child in the way they should grow. So that when they're old, they will not depart from it. The, pro the, 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 the psalmist, the proverb, yes, to say, good, you must train, not tell. So the, the training is not even a, 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 a good, pro it, it will be like, a harsh process for these guys, but you must train them so that when they will be old, they will never depart from this process. Okay, so this is our lesson about a what? About a rose. So anyone, guys, what have you learned? Roses need to be pruned. Roses need to be flowered every day. Amen. Train up a child in a way should go that when he grows up, he never departs from it. Thank you, thank you. Then who is about to pray for us? Can you pray for us? Let us pray. 
Jesus, let us be good boys, good girls and boys to be good and go to school and write our homeworks at home and finish and we go to church every day. Amen. What does the church say? Yeah, the hazards of MIT. <laughs> For those who are training, I'm coming also. So please don't, don't laugh at him too much because then I'll be scared to come. Um, I'm going to give this time to Pastor uh, for, for a prayer session. Good morning, church. So I heard a word for the first time called fatigation. And everyone laughed. It's actually an English word. We want to pray for those who are not feeling well. Uh, we know that we have the different challenges. I'm going to ask all those who are not feeling well, the, those who are sick, and those who have relatives and friends who are not feeling well at this moment. I'm going to ask you to stand up as we offer a word of prayer. Please, where, wherever you are, if you're not feeling well, or if you know someone <clears throat> who's not fe feeling well. And uh, I'll read Jeremiah chapter 14, ch chapter 17, excuse me. And verse 14, and it says, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. We must never forget that after God heals us, we must praise him. Amen. Let's bow our heads as we pray this morning. Loving Heavenly Father, we come before your presence on this, your holy day of worship. And we just want to extend our, grati our gratitude to you for your faithfulness. But in this moment, Father, we want to place all those who are standing as a representation of those who are not feeling well. We pray that may your healing power be administered. Father, you're the great physician. And thus the songwriter says, the great physician now is near the sympathizing Jesus. Who speaks the drooping heart to cheer? Oh, hear the voice of Jesus. We want to thank you, Father, because you have taught us that even with the thorns in our flesh, you are still sufficient for us. So, Father, we pray for healing power. May you heal whatever ailment, whether physical, psychological, or mental, or spiritual, touch each and every one of us. May you declare, as Christ declared, that I feel virtue has departed from me. Even those who come Nicodemusly, and choose to keep themselves anonymous, may you heal them. And Father, we pray that after you have healed us, may we be like that one leper who remembered to come back and say thank you. And so Father, we pray that in faith, in advance, we say thank you for what you have already started doing in our lives. Heal our minds, heal our hearts, heal our bodies. Heal relationships that, that are in trouble. And Father, when all has been said and done, it is our prayer that when Jesus comes to take those who have done his will, may all of us be among those who shall be saved. We thank you because you invite us on this your holy day to enter into your presence. So disappoint us not, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless us. And the church said... May you say to someone who's sitting next to you, you are anointed to be here for this time. You are appointed to be here for this time. I forgot to mention a few people who are amongst us. But I didn't see them. We have Pastor Guizo, uh, who is the missionary director at Waterfalls and his wife. May you please stand up so that the church might see you. 
and we might greet you in a special way. And the church said, we always want to welcome our division director for youth, always, because we are privileged. You know, my Mfundis always says there are only two churches that have this gift, citizen and others. But we have Pastor Gwatiringa, who is um, here with his wife, who is the director for youth at SID. What does the church say? Yes, I want to thank God for satisfying my need today. Because where does a preacher go to when he wants to listen to a sermon? Where does a preacher go to listen to a sermon? And I want to thank Elder Shimuka, who is here, so that I, as a preacher, can also listen to a sermon. And so God has satisfied my need to also hear the word of the Lord. Fortunately or unfortunately, he was one of my best friends. So I am grateful and I am thankful. And I want to thank you and your wife for taking this short notice to come here. And I want to thank you, Mainin, for allowing him to be here. And thanking God always. So we are going to ask one of my friends and his uh, and my favorite group, always divine, to assist us to prepare for this message. Amen. The great physician, um, now is near. I have, um, you know, very young girls uh, who are going to lead the song. If you've listened to the Vines album, the song was led by one Mabongi Mabaso, a very powerful minister. But trust me, these ladies are powerful. You shall hear. You shall thank me later.
sing together as a church. You are allowed to sing. forgot that I was supposed to come and stand before you. And uh, it, it uh, gets emotional as you reminisce on your life and realize how unworthy you are. And consider that in his grace, he have ordained one weak and feeble to speak in his place. Unworthy as I am, I hear the singer say, just as I am without one plea. O Lamb of God, I come, I come. We shall consider the God of Ruth, chapter 4. And I'm going to read for you, 
verse 6. And I read verse 9 through 10. The Redeemer said, Then I can redeem it for myself. Because I might put my own inheritance at risk. You take my right of redemption on yourself. Because I can't redeem it. Verse 9. Boaz addressed the leaders and all the people. You are witness today that I'm purchasing from Naomi all that belonged to Elimelech. And all that belonged to Kilian and Malon. Also, I'm acquiring as my wife, Ruth the woman from Moab, the wife of Malon in order to raise up the name of the deceased and heir for his property, so that the name of the deceased will not be cut off from his kinsmen and from the gate of his place. You are witness today. Then the woman said to Naomi, Blessed be Adonai, who today has provided you a redeemer. May his name be renowned in Israel. The woman who were her neighbors gave it a name, And they say, a son has been born to Naomi, and we shall call him Obed. He was the father of Jesse and the father of David. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Dear Lord in heaven, we acknowledge your lordship of our lives. We thank you, Lord, for the word. There is a word for every situation. Speak to us, dear God, in a language that we understand. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We start off with the book of Ruth. And I want us to go through this book, the whole, the entire book. It has got four chapters. It is the only book in the Bible that has got a woman who is a Gentile. It's named after a woman who is a Gentile. The other book is the book of Job. It's also made in the, in the, in the Hebrew Bible. Uh, it's named after a gender. This book starts off in Ruth chapter 1. The issue we have just read does not start off from where we read it. It has got a history. It's got a background. And the background, we find it in Ruth chapter 1. In Ruth chapter 1, we hear that there was a family of Elimelech, a family of Naomi, Malon, and Chilion. These people lived in Bethlehem, Ephrata. And there in Bethlehem, Ephrata, there was a famine in the land of Ephrata. If you look at the word Ephrata, it refers to the land of sufficiency or the land of bread. So there was famine in the land of bread. The land of bread can have famine. And there was famine in the land of bread. And, and uh, uh, Malon, Chilion, uh, uh, Naomi and Elimelech decide to relocate to Moab. Follow me closely. Follow me very closely. So they, they decide to relocate from Bethlehem to Moab. Now, if you are looking at it geographically, if you go to the land of Israel present day, you can literally, if you're on, on binoculars, you can literally see Moab from Bethlehem. It's not a big distance. It's less than 50 kilometers where they relocated to. It's just across the Dead Sea towards the plains of Moab with their limestone hills and their lush green grasses. It rains more on the side of Moab than it rains on the side of Bethlehem. But regardless of the rain, God still called the, the, the place that had not enough rain, he still called it the place of bread. So they, they relocated Elimelech, meaning uh, my God is king. He was a man of means. He was no, no ordinary man. He was, he was, they say of him, he was admired and he was of great substance. In Shona, we say in those Gangara, the Bethlehem. People of means, people who, who had their things, they call him in Greek, he was an opulentus. He had money, a, 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 a hyperperasus, a person who had a lot of means, mighty influential. Uh, 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 the International Study Bible calls him a man of great wealth. 
So when we're talking of Elimelech, he, he, he was not a man of ordinary. There are people who are present and there are people who have presence. So Elimelech would not just be present. When he came into a room, he both was present and he brought presence. There are people you will never notice even if they arrive because though they are present, they don't have presence. But Elimelech had what? Presence. So he was present there and he had his wife. Uh, the wife's uh, name was Naomi, meaning pleasant. So when they were living now with Malon and Chilion, they were going into the diaspora. Relocating and going to the diaspora. And, and everyone celebrated them as they were living the, the way that we used to do in those days. Everyone goes to the airport and, and we are looking forward to the people having many things. And, and, and we are wishing we could also catch a flight. Yeah, some of them came back, we, we remember, but most of them managed to get inside. And they got inside and they went to Moab. Everyone celebrated their departure. And they settled in Moab. Settled in Moab, 50 kilometers away from home. Father is dead. Elimelech is gone. Malon and Chilion decide to marry. There is Ruth. There is, there is Opa. We are still in from verse 1 to verse 5. That's what we are summarizing. They are there. And lo and behold, another tragedy hits the family. Malon dies. Chilion dies. And what is left? Three widows in one house. Three women in one house, but widows in one house. And Ruth and Naomi looks at these young ladies and says, I'm going back home. I'm going back home. Because I heard that the Lord has remembered Bethlehem. While they were in Moab, the Lord always remembers Bethlehem. Not Moab. He remembered Bethlehem. And what did he do? And uh, Naomi said, I'm going home. He says, no, stay behind because there's no need for you to go with me. But when we read chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, Ruth comes to Naomi and says, entreat me not to leave you. Because I want to go with you. Because where you go, you, where you go, I'll go. Your God will be my God. Where you lodge, I'll lodge. May God do to me. And more also, if not only by death we are separated. And the Bible says, when she saw that she was determined, she did not deny her. Now, when Ruth arrives, the record says she sneaked into Bethlehem. She left in pomp and fanfare. She came and sneaked into Bethlehem. But in Bethlehem, the paparazzi did not let her rest. They looked for her. I know there are people who feel unworthy. They sneak into church just before divine and just before it ends. The paparazzi will not let them rest. They will follow them. And when they got to Ruth, they looked at Ruth and said, is this Ruth? They looked at his records. Son begged with a frail figure. And she was looking pathetic. This is the woman who was married to one of the richest persons. Naomi, Alimelech, they were in the profile of Boaz. They were no ordinary people. If you read the book of 2 Chronicles, two pillars were on the temple that uh, uh, Solomon built. One side was called Shivan. The other one was called Boaz. Boaz was so important that even Solomon called one pillar Boaz. And Boaz was in the league of Elimelech. And lo and behold, the wife is back, wrinkled from diaspora with a saga bag. And they look at this woman coming back. 
and they know that she is called pleasant. How come you pleasant have become unpleasant? And they looked at her and she felt sorry. She could see in the eyes that they know that hey, she looks like her problems. And then she says, call me no more, Naomi. Call me Mara. Because the Lord has been bitter to me. I'm a woman of bitterness. I went out full. That's what it says. But I have come back empty. So they are looking at her, inspecting her. Inspecting her and they see behind her, there is another young lady, scruffy, and they are not sure who she is. And she is a Moabite. To aid insult to injury, what you brought us home is just a Moabite. After more than 15 years of sojourning in diaspora, you bring us a Moabite. No, you don't know who a Moabite is. Maybe I might want to tell you, remind you who the Moabite is. If you read Genesis chapter 19, verse 36 and 37, it says, Thus both the daughters of Lot were with child by their father. The first, bore, first one bore a son and called his name Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. This is a descendant of incest. And she is standing behind Ruth. What did you bring us from the diaspora? What did you bring us? What I know when you departed, we had great expectations. Lo and behold, you bring us a product of incest. Who are the Moabites? Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 3 to 6. An Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the assembly of Jehovah. Even to the tenth generation shall none belonging to them enter in the assembly of Jehovah forever. Thou shalt not seek their peace, nor their prosperity all the days forever. And this is what you bring us. A Moabite. This is a cursed human being. Follow me closely. Deuteronomy, uh, Numbers chapter 25, verse 1 to 3. And Israel abode in Shittim. These are ladies of Shittim. And the people began to play the harlot with the daughters of Moab. For they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bowed to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baalpu. The anger of Jehovah was kindled against Israel. When the Israelites were moving from Egypt. Follow me, we are on the introduction. So I want you to understand very clearly. So they are moving from the land of, of Canaan, of, of Egypt to the land of Canaan. Just before they enter, ba ba Balaam sends a temptation. And what he sends, he sends Moabite women. The record we explains about them, he says they were exquisite, symmetrical brunettes of women. Mesmerizing. The, 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 the people could not resist these women. And they dealt with the people thoroughly to the extent that in the middle of a prayer session, one of them came right in the middle of a prayer session and came with a Moabite. It was only Phineas who went with a javelin. And he went while they were in the act, he pierced through. And the javelin went to the floor. That's when God's anger retreated. These are the Moabites. And that is what you bring us, Ruth. You bring us, Ruth. You have brought us a cursed item. But the drama unfolds. I'm going to go to chapter 2. Chapter 2 gives verse 1. I, I want someone to read verse 1. I wasn't going to, to allow someone else to read. But just read verse 1. Chapter 2 and verse 1. Follow very closely. Is there someone who can read? I know I should have asked someone to be ready. But forgive me for, can someone indulge me? Chapter 2, verse 1. 
And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, uh -huh. a mighty man of wealth, uh -huh. of the family of Elimelech, uh -huh. and his name was Boaz. So, so chapter 2, verse 1, introduces a character and says, Naomi had a relative of his, of hers, and the relative's name was Boaz, of the family of Elimelech. Now, verse 2 does no, no longer talks about Naomi about Boaz. Now, now go to verse 2. It just introduces Boaz and is silent. Go to verse 2. And Ruth the Moabites uh -huh. said unto Naomi, Right? Let me now go to the field. Right? And glean ears of corn after him in, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go my daughter. Right. So verse 1 introduces Boaz. Verse 2 then tells us that Ruth is going out to glean in the field. And she is not specifically going to the field of Boaz. She's just going to any field. When you read it, verse 3 says, by chance she stumbled into the field of Boaz. By chance. And, and the elder uh, was as if he was preempting my sermon. And he said, you are not here by chance. There is a reason why you are here. And by chance, he, he bumped into the field of Boaz. And in the field of Boaz, Boaz comes. Verse 5 says, Then Boaz said unto his servant, that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? Huh? Ruth is in, and, and Boaz is coming. By chance, Boaz also visits his field. And by, by some spiritual cosmic coincidence, these people meet at exactly the specific time they were supposed to meet. This Moabite useless woman, God is planning a mathematical equation to, to cause a Moabite woman to meet the greatest man in Bethlehem. And they meet by chance. And when they meet by chance, Boaz says, Whose? Boaz is not saying, who is that woman? He is saying, whose is she? Oh, yeah. for, follow closely. So for, for you to appreciate, are you with me, Shesh? Is there, is there, are you with me, someone? Now, for you to appreciate what he's saying. Uh, uh, Boaz then went to Ruth and then says, you can glean. You can take whatever you want. Then he went to the boys and said, don't trouble her. Let her glean not only on the edges of the field. Let, him, let her glean among the sheaves. But not only that, can you also drop some things on purpose so that she can pick? Are, are, are you there, someone? Are, are you there, Shesh? The, the, then Ruth says, what have I done a foreigner? Why have I found favor in you? Then this is the response that Boaz gave. And Boaz answered to Ruth now and said unto her, It has been fully told me all that you have done to your mother-in-law since the death of thine husband and how that you have left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity and art come unto a people which thou knowest not had for. So what Boaz is saying, I know you already. I know everything. When I'm telling you to glean in the sheaves, I know about it. I just wanted to know whose you were. So that I can deal with the matter of whose you are later on. Are you following someone? So he needed to connect at the level of whose. Not at the level of who. Follow me closely. Amen. So, so uh, Boaz arrives. When Boaz arrives, Ruth is upgraded from gleaning from the peripheries to gleaning amongst the sheaves. When a relative of, 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 uh, of Naomi arrives, the life of Ruth is changed on account of the rich relative. Amen. What has been the impact of your influence in your family? Have they felt that a relative arrived? Can 
when they phone and say, here yeah, our relative has arrived. We were gleaning on the peripheries, but now we are gleaning amongst the sheaves. Where are you gleaning? Have you made them glean among the sheaves? Oh, pay adventure, you are dropping some things on purpose so that they can pick. Regardless of whether they are more bites or not, can they pick something from you? Amen. I was gleaning amongst the sheaves. In the cosmic drama, Ruth found favor from, 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 from Boaz. In this drama, Boaz and Ruth were just pawns on the chessboard of God. Amen. They didn't know that they are becoming the lineage of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Until eternity, Ruth must be woken up and be told that you are the great grandmother of David. You are the great grandmother of Jesus. She did not know. You may not know who you are, who you will become, but never mind that when you know whose you are, you are sorted. You are sorted. You are sorted. So, verse 20 on chapter 2. So Ruth goes back. Then Boaz asked Ruth to come. Says, give him, give her water. And then they started to do uh, baked bread. And they said, give some baked bread to, to Ruth. And Ruth said, kept some for her mother-in-law. Then she goes home. When she gets home, Naomi says to her daughter-in-law, Blessed be the Lord God, Amen. who hath not left off his kindness to the living and to the daughter, to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, The man is near kin of us, one of our next kinsmen. So Ruth introduces a word in chapter 20 from a Hebrew point of view that is different from the words that she uses in verse, that is used in verse 1. In chapter 2 of verse 1, it says he is our close relative. In chapter 20, he says he is our kinsman. Then she continues to speak to her and says, verse 2, verse 23, you might be harassed in other fields, but you'll be safe with him. The kinsman redeemer gives you safety. Amen. So he, he, she introduces a word that is called kinsman. The word that is translated kinsman is goyal. The kinsman redeemer. You have got a goyal in Boaz. And when you have this goyal, you are safe. Follow close. Now I want to go a little bit deeper on this goyal. The definition of goyal is redeemer. Someone who rescues Someone who gives salvation. Someone who pulls you from the dung hills and puts you on the uppermost, from the guttermost to the uppermost. The, the, the goyal changes your situation. And this word is used several times in the Bible. Amen. So that you understand what is the goyal. Just, just follow me closely. Lev Leviticus chapter 25. I'll read for you verse 23 to verse 25. What was the role of this kinsman redeemer? The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine. God is speaking to the children of Israel, and he says the land shall not be sold forever. No one is supposed to sell land. That's Amen. what the Bible is saying. Amen. Forever. Forever. You are not hearing me. The land shall not be sold. Forever. It's not cannot, might not. No, no. Shall not be sold forever. For the land is mine, for you are strangers and sojourners with me. But if thy brother waxeth poor and sold away some of his possession, now if any of his kinsmen come to redeem it, then he shall redeem that which his brother has sold. So the role of the kinsman redeemer was if one of your relatives has sold his land because he's broke, the kinsman redeemer would come and pay for that land. 
so that you can redeem it back. He redeems it on your behalf. Are you following? That was the first row. The second row, Leviticus chapter 25, verse 47 and 49. Follow me closely. Brace yourselves. Take your, your notes. If a foreigner residing among you becomes rich, that is, a non-Israelite becomes rich, and any of your fellow Israelites become poor and sell themselves to the foreigner as a slave, and to any members of their fallen crime, they retain the right of redemption after they have sold themselves. One of their relatives may redeem them, an uncle or a cousin or any blood relative. When it came to a kinsman redeemer, it came to issues of blood. The kinsman redeemer was a person of blood. Hello. There are issues when we need to help one another, help each other at home, be issues of blood. Follow, follow very closely. Uh, uh, the other uh, uh, qualification, uh, uh, Numbers chapter 35, verse 19, the close relative responsible for the no. blood of the dead man is the one who put the murderer to death. So if someone murders my relative, I was allowed to go and meet them. If they, they happen to be roaming around, if I look for them, I was supposed to kill them also. And the person who was responsible for that was the goyal. And every family had a specific goyal. I, I got fascinated when I was looking at this story that each time they went to do excavation for the archaeologist, they realized that in every homestead there was a bigger house. Around it, there was a bigger house. It also surprised me when we went to Nyanga, there is also a place around Ziwa where when they were building, there would be smaller houses and a bigger house. We also had goyals in, in, in Africa. There was a goy or someone responsible for being a kinsman redeemer. How did a person qualify to be a kinsman redeemer? Firstly, he must be of blood. He must be of blood. We must share the same blood in our veins. The DNA of the kinsman redeemer must speak to the DNA of the person who is being redeemed. The second thing is, thank you. He must have the capacity to perform. The kinsman redeemer was no ordinary guy. When we read chapter 4, it says, I am not willing to redeem. In the case of Boaz, there were two people. Chapter 4 says, Boaz went and said, This guy is more eligible to redeem than me. But the guy says, I can redeem, but I can only go halfway. I can't redeem full way. But Boaz had the capacity to redeem. He was willing to pay the price and to pay the price in full. Amen. The kinsman redeemer did not go halfway. He was willing to pay the price in full. And the last thing the kinsman redeemer must be willing to pay all the obligations, not part Amen. of the obligations. Chapter 3. Naomi had she's a plan. And the plan of Naomi is to say to Ruth, go into the field, dress well. I don't know what dresses Ruth got. I don't know where she got them from. Uh, where does she? Whether she borrowed the dresses or not. The Bible says Ruth went and she dressed herself and she uh, wore some perfume and Boaz was harvesting. It is the festival of Shivat that they are doing. And there Boaz is married, is, is in Mary, is happy. And then Ruth is told to go and uncover the feet of Boaz. Uh, for, for those who are over 18, you understand the, the description of what was happening here. We will save it to the imagination of those who know. So they covered and 
and and and and and Ruth lays her head there. And uh, in the midnight, Boaz walks up and is surprised that there's a human being. And Boaz says, "Who are you?" He asked. Then she says, "Say, I am Ruth." And you are a relative who is supposed to take care of me. So spread your edge of your cover over me. Now let, let me let me have another vision. <laughs> and he asked, "Who are you?" And she said, "I am your handmaid." In chapter 2, Ruth has not said who she was. In this chapter, Ruth explicitly announces who she was. I am your handmaid. Boaz, I'm yours. Oh, what a sight. What a sight. Ruth is lying on the feet of Boaz. And Boaz says, who are you? I am Ruth. I am your handmaid. And then she says, spread your robe over your handmaid because you are a redeeming kinsman. The word that says cover or spread your wing is translate the word kanaf. The word kanaf, it means corner. Spread your corner of your garment over me. And on the corner of the garment, that's where the tassels were, were painted in red, in blue, which signified the relationship between the man and his God. And he says, spread your corner. Okay. When, when, when Malachi speaks, hello, church, when Malachi speaks of, of Christ coming, he says, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wind. He will rise with the kanaf in his wings. To spread his corner. That's why the woman with the issue of blood spread out his hand and she touched the kanaf of Christ. At that kanaf, there was healing. Spread your kanaf over me because you are a redeeming kinsman. He's saying, I, I know you have the capacity. Spread your kanaf. I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed in this community. They look at me as a Moabite. I'm a, I'm a laughing stock, Amen. but please spread Amen. your kanaf over me. Amen. Spread your kanaf. I've heard enough of being looked down on. I need someone to spread their kanaf over me. And that can only be done by the kinsman redeemer. No one else has the capacity. The other one has already refused. He has said no. This will risk my inheritance. You are not understanding what the first guy is saying. He's saying, if I take a Moabitess into my bloodline, I have included a Gentile in the Israelite blood. So it's not possible that I take the Gentile. It will compromise my inheritance going forward. I can't take that risk. I can't. I might have the kanaf, but not for this gender. The kanaf is there, but not for this gender. Dare I say to you that when the situation was like that, a man called Boaz said, I'm willing to take the risk. Guys, you are witness to me on this day that I'm buying this woman and I'm taking her over. But I'm, 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 I'm surprised. I'm overwhelmed by the situation. And the reason why I'm overwhelmed is Boaz is a brother, cousin to Elimelech. So Malon is a son of Boaz. So Ruth is a daughter-in-law of Boaz. So if there was going to be someone to redeem, Boaz must marry Naomi, not Ruth. How is it possible that I redeem my brother and get my, the wife of my son to redeem my brother? But this kingsman redeemer must become worthy 
must be of blood. And then she, he went down and took Ruth a Gentile. Otherwise, we had no part in the Israelite religion until Ruth came. Hey. What part had you had? How, how, how is Musiam a part of this blood lineage? How, how can Mamoyo come into this? How can Mashkira come into this? You were not part of this commonwealth of Israel. We needed Boaz to take a Gentile so that we become part of the bloodline. Otherwise, we could never have a kinsman redeemer. This kinsman redeemer must come. Was Christ worthy to be our kinsman redeemer? Was he worthy? Was he worthy to be kinsman for us? To redeem us? Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 14, speaking of Christ, do I have a blood relationship with him? Do I have a blood relationship with my kinsman redeemer? Since Boaz is the type and Christ is the antitype. Says, read through chapter 2, verse 14, 16, verse 18, and 16, uh, and see verse 16 and 18. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise partook of the same blood that through death he must destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil for verily he took not on himself the nature of angels but he took him the seed of Abraham wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself suffered being tempted, he is also able to succor all those who are being tempted. Amen. Amen. For as much as we see Christ, he partook flesh and blood so that he could become one of us. Otherwise, we could not be part of this salvation. And Christ has become part of us. Amen. Was he worth it? Did he have the capacity? It says here, Revelation chapter 5. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written on both sides, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Worthy, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scrolls? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside. My brothers and my sisters, there was no one who was willing to serve us. We needed a kinsman redeemer. And Christ is our kinsman redeemer. That's why it says, do not weep. See the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he has triumphed. He is able to open the seals and its seven seals. God is able to redeem us. I don't know your storyline. I don't know what happened. I don't know your Moab where you had visited. I don't know what they did to you that you came back home frail. I don't know. But when Christ had finished feeding everyone, 5,000 had been fed, he said, gather the leftovers. Gather the leftovers. He made sure that even the leftovers were spared. And God is saying this morning, give me your left of us. What is left of your life? I don't know what it is, but gather all those left of us. In your veins might be flowing a virus which you cannot deal with, but he's saying, I am the kinsman redeemer. And the beauty of it, Pastor Moyo, is that when everything is finished, the book of Ruth is not called the book of Boaz. Yet Boaz is the main feature of the book of Ruth. Why is it not the book of Boaz? Because each time there is a wedding, even if the groom pays the most lobola, the wedding is always about the bride. Christ has made sure that though he died, 
God made him who had not seen to become seen that you can become the righteousness of God. And he hung on the cross just to celebrate the bride. You are the bride. The kinsman redeemer has done it for you. What more do you want? What more do you want? That's why he says softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. He's calling for you and for me. At the heart's portals, he's waiting and pleading. Pleading for you and for me. And when the day was organized, and Boaz is hand in hand with, uh, with, with Ruth for a wedding, and everyone is, ah, ah, Ruth is wedding. Ruth. You, you know, there are people when you hear that they are wedding, you keep on repeating the name so that everyone know. So at least people understand that maybe they are not missing it. She said, Je Jennifer. It's a wedding. Yes. Like wedding. Like wedding. Like Jennifer. And they say, yes, J, J Jennifer. So, okay, did you verify? Do you have the cards? Can you send the cards? So it is, it is, it is surprising enough that Ruth was wedding. It is more mind-boggling that it was Boaz. That you come, Ruth, from a fair and take the best of Israel when the ladies of Israel were there. Favor is not fair. When you see God doing this for people, it might cause you confusion. Favor ain't fair. Favor is just the favor of God. And when God favors Ruth, it had nothing to do with people. Even if they got angry, it did not change God's decision on Ruth. Let me close to you and say, I'm looking at a site on the hour and Ruth coming in the gown, coming down, and the gown has covered all the weaknesses of Ruth. We no longer see, and the gown is the kanaf, is the kanaf of Boaz. The kanaf is covered. Christ is willing to cover your weaknesses. They know you. They know what you can do. They know your capacity and they are scared of you. But Christ is willing to cover you. There is a fountain filled with blood. Drawn from Emmanuel. And there is a sinner who is saying, Father, allow me to plunge into this. And the word says, when you hear his voice today, do not harden your hearts. There is someone who is saying, Lord, it's me you have been looking for. I want you as my kinsman redeemer. I want a kinsman redeemer. If that's your prayer, you want a kinsman redeemer. And you want to pray that prayer. Shall we rise as we are going to pray? Just as I am with a one plea the blood was shed for me, and then God beats me come to for Ruth it took a lot of courage it was no mean task you know you see it when people meet men or women of means people start to say many things that they are not even planned to say they go into confusion start confessing start apologizing Ruth is there before Boaz and she has an aim. I want a kinsman redeemer. And there's someone who's saying, Lord, I want a kinsman redeemer. Redeem me, Lord. Redeem me, Even Lord. me. I'm willing to take a step and move forward. I just want you to change me. 
our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. The word says, let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness. With boldness. Approach the throne of grace with boldness. We have not been given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of strength by which we call Abba, Father. Someone wants to move boldly and say, God, I'm just that person you've been looking for. I want to move forward. I even want baptism. I know my life. Lord, I need you in my life. If that's your prayer, just raise your hand where you are. Says, Lord, I, it's not enough. I even want baptism. I want a newness. Your, head about, your head's about. You're praying wherever you are. Just raise your hand. Continue raising your hand. Amen. I see them. I see them in the congregation. They are saying, Lord, I just want to come. Just as I am. Just as I am. Your, 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 your love has drawn me. Now to be thine and thine alone. All lamb of gold. I come. I come. Just raise your hand. You, you want God and that's your desire. Deep in your heart you say, Lord, you are my blood relation. I have found it today. I'm of blood with you. And you want him in your heart. We want the elders to pray for you specifically. After those who are raising their hands, after the service, we're just going to walk quietly to the best. I see them. I see the gentlemen. I see the ladies. The Lord hears. The Lord is. I'm poor, wretched, and crying. Sight, riches, healing of the mind. Oh Lord, now to be thine. Yes, all I need in thee to find. All lamb of God, I come. I come just as you are. I know you have come from a far place and you are afraid, scared what's going to happen to me. I'm in a foreign land. God is calling me. Harden not your hearts. When you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Don't be difficult. When the Spirit is speaking, the word that is saying, raise your hand, is the Holy Spirit. The other one that is saying, don't raise, is the devil pulling you down. Be bold. Raise your hand, be bold. Somebody, maybe I see the other one there. Be bold. We are going to pray now. We are going to pray. You can put down your hands. Those who have been raising their hands, who walk softly. And the others who say, I want to join this one. Because I found my kinsman, Redeemer. Of God, I Shall we pray? Yes, Lord. You still speak. And you are God. I hear the word says, thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Yes. Find in me thine all in all. Thank you that Jesus paid it all. Yeah. Yeah. All to him. I all. Sin had blessed a crimson stain. But he said to me, come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they shall be as white as wool. He has paid it for me. He has paid it for you. While you were yet sinners, the kinsman, the kinsman redeemer, the Goya was hanging on the cross. Yeah. Looking through the corridors of time, he saw a day like today. And he envisioned and said, Father, if it was for one sinner at City Center Church, I would still have died. So come. Come. Come as you are. 
Come and drink from the living waters. Now unto the people of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the Lord lift up his face upon you and bless you as you come in. Bless you as you go out. May the blessing of the Lord follow you and overtake you. May you be blessed as you come in and as you go. May you claim the promise that says, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Before, because he has said to you, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through God, bringing down strongholds and casting down every imagination and bringing every spirit to the subjection of the spirit of the living God. Thank you, Lord. We praise you now. Someone must be released from the power of the enemy. Maybe someone is struggling with demonic powers. Maybe someone is struggling with a breakthrough. Maybe someone has a question for how long, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Again, Lord, can you cover us with your kanaf? We need your kanaf. That's our desire. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated. We are going to invite um, those who are requiring prayer, those who require baptism. We will invite all the pastors that are around us to come and join us. In yes, including you. To come and join us uh, for a word of prayer. Those who want baptism and those who want uh, special prayer. We will meet in the vestry. Uh, we also want to ask Elder Mashamire uh, or anyone from interest coordination to also come and participate with us. We we'll invite uh, the groups to sing while we are filing out. And may God bless you. We we'll meet in the afternoon as we are going to listen to music in worship. Amen. We shall sing together as we file out. If you're here at 2.30, you will hear the group singing. Hymn 7, 6, Rescue the Perishing. Care for the dying. 
Sun 